Hi, it's Leslie Zemeckis, and I'm going to read to you from my very first book that started this all, Behind the Burley Q, which actually started as a documentary first. I spent two years going all over the country talking to men and women who had been in burlesque, old time burlesque, 20s, 30s, 40s, really stopped about the 50s a little bit. Um, and there were so many stories that I decided to do a book. But today I want to talk about uh, a friend of mine who's no longer, but her name was Sherry Britton. She was huge in New York. She worked for our gorgeous, beautiful woman who I interviewed and became friends with. And I have her collection. This is one of her dresses. Her dresses are amazing. Um, and she always said that she had a 14 inch waist and she does. This is teeny. She had big boobs, teeny tiny waist. Petite little girl. Here's her, um, I don't know if this is a hat box. If you can see, it's all plastic. It's fantastic. With some of her gloves, her tiaras. She was, she was known for always wearing a little tiara or a headpiece. I have a gazillion of these. That it looks like she sewed herself because here's some of the beading. Um... Here's another one. There's some, but these are these are these don't look like they were finished. I have some in a case that are completely done and absolutely gorgeous. All her little, she had little shiny toe clip things. You can see um, rhinestones, really beautiful. So I want to read a little bit about her. And in her honor, I'm wearing a vintage flamingo pin given to me by Rachel Ann Jensen. She's got the best vintage taste ever and I'm going to put on my glasses today and let me show you a picture of her and she is really really stunning I've got her scrapbooks I've got all kinds of her things okay here is Sherry Britton so you know who I'm talking about amazing figure amazing lady super smart really kind really tough Sherry Britton the girl with the curtain of long black hair that hung down to her waist was born in New Jersey as Edith, Edie Zack. She had told me she had taken her stage name from a liquor store on a bottle of Harvey's Bristol Cream. Sherry was well respected and established in New York, remembers Dixie Evans. We all love Dixie, we miss Dixie. Young Edie had a crushingly hard childhood. She was born in England to a mother who, who first tried to abort her with a 12 inch hat pin then later abandoned her when she was two. Sherry's father started cavorting with different people. She would live in 15 foster homes and a couple orphan asylums. At 10, she was back with her mother and her mother's new husband. The husband performed oral sex on her, she said. At 14, she moved in with her aunt. However, Sherry was becoming a voluptuous young beauty and her aunt had a young, handsome husband with a wandering eye. Another uncle raped Sherry. And so my aunt, feeling that I might now be attractive to her husband, so she threw me out. I was homeless, sleeping in people's cars, parks, the subway. This is New York, she said, but not before her aunt beat her, beat up the young teenager. After a year on the street, she met a guy who asked her to marry him. Unbeknownst to the naive girl, he had already married, but pretended to go through the ceremony. It was a phony marriage. He put a ring on my finger and I thought I was married, she said. She had no idea what getting married even was. She believed him and assumed she was. And I was pregnant four times that year and he beat the shit out of me. It was terrible, horrible, she said. Her pregnancy, pregnancies ended in abortions. She always wanted a baby and likely would have been a lovely mother. She was nurturing as testified by her cousin, Melaine, who she helped raise when she was born. Sherry stood apart from the other strippers for many reasons. I was the only one who didn't take off my G-string. Everyone else took off their G-string. Yuck. I got fired a couple of times until they realized people came back hoping to see the forbidden fruit. So they stopped firing me, she said. Bizarrely, she would balance a glass of water on her 15-year-old breasts and walk across the stage. My father showed up and he said, my daughter is in burlesque. I said, where were you? Where were you? What was I supposed to do, she said. 
She faced him square, knowing he hadn't been there for her, hadn't protected her from abandonment, hunger, rape, humiliation, and sadness. Even though she hated burlesque, it didn't mean she did not like working in the nightclub stripping, she did. But the clubs were very different than the theaters. Sherry moved into nightclubs, appearing at Leon and A's on 52nd Street for six or seven years straight, starting at the age of 16 and breaking all attendance records. And conversely, I think she was out um, sick one or two weeks and Lee really Sincere took over for her. Nightclubs had vaudeville acts and I sang and danced and did not have to strip down to as much as I did in burlesque. She enjoyed singing. I felt that stripping had its place at the time in burlesque with the scenes with men, the girls and production numbers, so that I felt that it was a legitimate showing. But what I've seen the last few years, there is no comedy and production numbers. During World War II, she toured hospitals and sang and met the wounded soldiers. In Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, there was a cosmetic reconstruction hospital. She sang to boys with empty eye sockets. There were so many boys without faces. And I looked across and I said to the boy who was guiding me, he had two dimples and no teeth, a bullet had gone through him. If that boy comes over to me, I'll die. He did. This poor boy's face was inside out. He had a sense of humor and he had a delightful personality. Started telling me where the different places on his face came from, like 27 operations. And finally he said, they just made me an eyelid and the only comparable flesh is on a man's penis. So forevermore, I'll be cockeyed. Sherry had her share of heartbreaks and heartaches, but she also had an indefatigable spirit and a sense of wonder about the people and the world. In burlesque, I felt that there were two of me, one on the stage and one watching me undress for all the morons in the audience. It's incredible to me that anyone could have lived that life and survived with any sense of self-respect or any compassion or any love for humanity at all. It amazes me, but thank goodness I remained a decent, loving person. Sherry Britton, she died when I think she was 89. I miss her. Thank you.